Welcome to another episode of the Pursuing Greatness podcast, the place experts share their wisdom on living well by mastering health, wealth, relationships, and spirit. Before we get started, I want to let you know that the best way to support the show is just to subscribe, like, and share this episode with your friends and family. Also, if you'd like to learn more about how to master life, check out our website at pursuinggreatnesspodcast.com. With that said, I hope you enjoy the episode. We have a very special guest with us today, so grab your pen and paper and enjoy the journey. All right, and we are live. Today we have with us Caitlin Lewis. Caitlin is an innovation and transformation advisor coming to us by way of London and uh, at originally South Africa. So we have a very right. global citizen in front of us, folks. <laughs> Caitlin, thank you very much for hopping on the show. How are you doing today? Ah, well, thank you so much for having me, Gabe. I, um, I'm doing well. Thank you. As I was saying, it's been boiling hot in London, but finally cooled down today. So I am enjoying feeling comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's unique. We're both, in, we're both in the same kind of environments. I'm in Seattle, you're in London. So I, I know what it's like to be in heat when, you don't, when you're not used to it. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. So to get us started, why don't you tell everybody you know, who you are, what you do, and how you got started down that path in the first place? Absolutely. So I am an innovation and transformation advisor. And to be honest, it's really only something that I've gotten into in say the last three years, when I started doing my MBA through the uh, Warwick Business School here in the UK, I just realized that I have an absolute passion for innovation. And not only that, but helping teams and large corporates innovate more effectively. And I've really found that the secret source for doing this, if you want to call it that, is helping people to build stronger relationships. So that's really what I focus on. I will be releasing a book in the not so distant future on how organizations can build out their ecosystems to help them grow and innovate successfully. Congratulations on that. That's pretty exciting. Um, Okay, so you said you focus on innovation and it is mostly, most of the work that you do is with relationships. Um, take us to the, the interplay with those two topics. Um, innovation, when you think of innovation, usually you think of technological innov innovation. You think of new ideas, you think of new processes, things like that. Um, you're saying innovation mostly comes from strong teams, strong relationships. So kind of tell us, uh, tell us your view on that and how those two play out together. Absolutely. So I think that the first place to start is dispelling that myth around innovation. We generally like to think of it as something that's super disruptive, an Uber or an Apple iPhone, which of course are incredible innovations, but there are a lot of really small incremental innovations that take place over time that um, we might maybe not quite as aware of, but it doesn't mean that they're any less impactful and I think that the majority of the time, that is where large corporations are spending their time. And I think, you know, the idea of relationships in relation to innovation is something that's not quite explored at the moment. So when you think about it, when a large corporation wants to innovate, they have got to think about their consumers and what their consumers want. So at the most tangible sort of space, innovation is about understanding the relationship that you have with your customer or your consumer. But taking a step away from that, you then also have to look after your internal relationships. So those are ones within your teams, making sure that there is a safe space for failure, um, you know, for, for experimentation, and actually building the environment for you to it, engage with one another and ensuring that there are diverse opinions. But what I've been focusing on more recently is this idea of organizational ecosystems, which looks at how recently businesses have actually been building relationships with external organizations um, that don't just form a one-to-one -one connection, but they are with multiple stakeholders and they actually all engage together to innovate. And this is obviously a sort of, sorry, this is more generally around much more substantial problems. 
that aren't necessarily going to be solved in one industry or for one industry. These are challenges that multiple industries are facing and they are challenges that multiple industries will have to get together to solve. So for example, things around sustainability. Okay, gotcha. So you, um, I mean, a few things jumped out to me when you were talking. First, uh, you, you mentioned safe space for failure. Um, mm. I, I love that that uh, idea, especially when it comes around um, allowing people to be themselves and to generate ideas without fear of, of any repercussions, because that is where good ideas come from, is the stupid ones. So um, <laughs> I, I love that you said that. Uh, and then you went into organizational ecosystems. Um, I'm not sh- I'm not entirely sure I, I, I understand exactly what you're talking about there. Um, so go, take me a little bit deeper into that. Um, from what I understand so far, it sounds like you're saying organizational ecosystems in the sense that different organizations um, from different uh, industries, different d- disciplines, um, engaging with each other and figuring out solutions to problems that would, th- the answer comes from a different industry, but it can be applied to your industry is that am i kind of on the right track there yeah exactly the good news is is that ecosystems are a really amorphous term Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. um you know a lot of the time people will use them as a catch-all to talk about a whole lot of different things and that's ultimately why i wanted to do research into this is to provide leaders with a common understanding of what ecosystems are and why having some kind of an ecosystem strategy for their business is exceptionally important. But you've really understood the, um, the bare bones of it, I would say. But it's about businesses understanding that they don't operate in a vacuum. And all around them, they will have relationships with their external world. Um, This might just be based on proximity. So if you think about pharmaceuticals and how, you know, so many pharmaceutical companies like Roche, Novartis have set up in Basel in Switzerland, a campus that's supposed to be sort of everything that they do and all of their operations happen there. And so then sort of organically, you might find that, you know, those two companies might have more to do with one another because they just have that proximity. But more than that, you might have more informal relationships where the success of one organization um, sort of helps with the success of another, even though they actually have nothing to do with each other. And then, of course, you have your more obvious relationships, which are the likes of your suppliers or your legal authorities or your regulatory authorities that you need to look after and government organizations that you might need to be working with in order to be allowed to operate within certain markets. So it's about organizations being able to identify all of those different um, external organizations that impact their business and how they do it and actually starting to build stronger relationships with them But also, as opposed to it just being one-to-one and engaging on that basis, seeing if you can't get everybody into a common space. Um, Gotcha, okay. Yeah, then you also, you have some amazing examples of organizations that have built ecosystems to actually supply or provide a really coherent customer solution. Apple Pay is one of my favorite examples of this. You know, um, they took the NFC chip or the near-field communication chip which obviously was not provided by them, but they optimized it with a company to be able to embed it into their iPhones at the point of manufacture. And then they worked with the likes of MasterCard and Visa to facilitate the transactions so that every time you wave your phone after over a payment machine, you, have, you can complete a transaction. MasterCard and Visa and Apple now have a mutual kind of dependency on one another to mm-hmm. be able to fulfill that service to, for the customer. And so that can be quite powerful too. Gotcha. Um, <clears throat> uh, so yeah, I think, I think I know where you're going with this and I, I like it. Um, so kind of taking it to the perspective, you know, there's people listening and watching who run their own businesses. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, most likely they're not going to be the Cokes and the, and the apples. Um, it's going to be, yeah. you know, Joe construction or um, Bob's dentistry, anything like that. And so, from the perspective of someone who is running a small to medium sized business, how, uh, what, how, how can they make this type of um, what you're talking about? How can they make it actionable for their business? 
Totally. So the very first thing that you have to understand is why it is that you are wanting to build out your ecosystem. Um, through my research, I've identified three main areas. The one which is kind of the most easy to understand is about realizing that you can't do something alone, that you, you need to outsource, you need to build relationships with other organizations because they have capabilities that you don't, and you need those capabilities to provide your product or service. The second reason why you might be starting to think about ecosystems, and I should also add that none of these are mutually exclusive. Often I'll find that there's a combination of all three of these reasons that contribute to your reason why. But the second one is around facing a substantial problem. Um, that again, you just, you can't solve alone and you need other voices in the room and other expertise in the room to help you come up with that solution that you're going to offer. And the final one is actually around realizing that you have got to change your way of working. Maybe your relationships aren't very strong right now, or there is some kind of discomfort within the organization around the way things are going that you realize you need to change and you need to think about doing things differently. So I would say that out of those three reasons, as I said, there would be a combination but you'll always find one that is the most important, the one that kind of seems to have the, the highest weighting. Mm -hmm. From that, you're then going to start thinking about, well, what will success look like um, if we start working more effectively? Or, you know, for a Unilever, for example, they realized that they just were not getting... Um, enough innovation from their suppliers. So they wanted to see a higher sort of share of R&D from their suppliers. That was what success looked like for them. Um, so you're going to start thinking through that and those sort of hard, harder, um, that, that harder evidence of what success would look like for your program. I would say the second step then is around having to rethink what your strategic focus might be as a result. So again, using the R&D example, the Unilever example with R&D, this also required them to rethink what their relationships with their suppliers might look like. So now they've got to build, bring procurement into that conversation. Now procurement's role is no longer just going to be about cost cutting. It's going to be about building stronger relationships with a strategic focus. So you've got to now rethink how procurement might do that and what concessions you might have to get them. So again, you can no longer just evaluate procurement's performance on cost cutting and savings. Um, so what will that look like for different units within your business? Then you're going to get to the point where you start mapping out all of your relationships with your outside world to identify the external organizations that matter the most to you. And that's where I come in and I help organizations to rethink those relationships and identify how they can start working with external organizations to help them reach their goals. Ah, very cool. I love it. Um, and actually, so before I, uh, right now my, my main, um, business is real estate, but before that I worked as management consultant for four years or seven years, actually, geez. Wow. Um, and we did uh, a lot of the process mapping. So it sounds like that is, um, that, I mean, going, thinking back to the question of, you know, how can people make this actionable for their business? Um, it sounds like the, the main takeaway, the thing that they can actually go and do tomorrow um, to, to implement this in their business is to really map out, um, you know, the processes that they have in their business and then the relationships that interact with those processes um, to figure out what, where the dependencies are and where, um, I mean, I'm, I'm going down this path, but correct me when, when I'm mistaken. I think you're spot on. You do have to understand your business, but I would say before you do anything, understand why. Um, because understanding why it is that you are wanting to build out your ecosystem will definitely impact exactly what it is that you decide to do and who you choose to build relationships with. So I think that's really important. And I would say generally in business, I think it's something that we don't spend enough time on. We get so caught up in meeting some kind of business need or trying to solve the problem that we don't take the step back to think about why it is that we want to do this thing. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, it all comes from the customer because if they don't buy it, then there is no, uh, is no reason. That's for sure. There you go. There you go. <laughs> the all important customer. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, believe it or not, we are nearing the end of the episode. It's a 20 minute episode. So we, I'm going to move us quickly into the, the super fast round where I ask questions and you answer. Um, first question is about books. I always love asking, uh, guests their favorite book recommendations. So give us one book recommendation for business and then one for general life wisdom. What would you say? So one for business has to be great by choice by Jim Collins, absolutely brilliant book. One on um, sort of more lifestyle, there is a fantastic book by Mary Portis called Work Like a Woman. And I think that whether or not you are a woman, it is a brilliant read because it talks about sort of how there are some qualities that you can really build on as a woman or even as a male. It's not to say you don't have those skills uh, towards building out a balanced life and becoming a better leader. Nice. I love it. So great white choice. What's that one about? Sorry. Great the, by choice. Oh, great, great by, by choice. choice. Okay. Yeah. I wrote that down wrong. <laughs> by choice. Okay. Yeah. Jim Collins, great business writer, really yep. just talks about sort of the, again, that secret source that organizations can have. Um, to go from just being good to being great, but that there's a, a really purposeful choice in that. Absolutely. I love it. Great by choice. I have, I think I actually read that one too. It's, it's, uh, it's funny. Yeah. And then work like a woman. I love it. Mm -hmm. Great book recommendations. Um, next, uh, next question. We all use tons of apps, tons of tools. Um, I think we have too many, but there are some that really do contribute to your life. So uh, if you could give one recommendation for either an app or a tool or a website um, that contributes to your life, what is that recommendation? It has to be the Breathe app. It's B-R-E-E-T-H-E. -E -E, and it's basically guided meditations. Uh, I started at the beginning of lockdown in March and has really helped me to just be more present. Yeah, absolutely. And it's funny how, um, you know, we're, we're recording this August 13th, 2020. And, you know, we're deep into COVID times. Um, and it, it, it's just funny how like, you know, we're in COVID. And so we're indoors most of the time. I um, mean, you'd think that there would be, you know, there are fewer distractions, that it, everything would be more calm. But I find myself being even more anxious when, when I'm not <laughs> when I'm not out in the world than when I'm just, you know, sitting Absolutely. here in my house all day long. Um, yeah. So breathe. That is a it's a great recommendation. Yeah, could not recommend it more, really. It's um, genuinely helped me, um, as you say, with a little bit of anxiety and also just understanding yourself a bit better and being able to take that step back. Cool. I love it. Um, next quote or next question. Um, habits are the foundation of our life and they, they really build up who we are today. So you have had success in your life. Um, if you could give one habit that has contributed, contributed the most to where you are today, what would that habit be? Ooh, good question. Um, I think routine, right? Um, I am an absolute sucker for routine. And although I can recognize that sometimes I end up doing things just because it's the way I've always done it and it's because that's my routine, for the most part, it's really helped me to ground my life in some positive habits, I will say. Um, and also just give me a bit of a constant when often I feel like the rest of the world is going crazy. And that's even outside of COVID times um, when work's really stressful. At least I know there's that routine that I can come back to and get some constancy from. Absolutely. You need to have some things in your life that are the same, that are, are constant or else uh, you just feel like you're being tossed in the storm. Um, there was one, it was a book on Confucius or by Confucius, probably not by Confucius. I think it was on Confucius, but they were, uh, they were talking about um, how, you, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to screw this one up. What, what was the topic? It was about how if you do something over and over again, it's, it's the foundation of life. Um, don't quote me on that one because it totally escaped my mind. So I'm gonna just I'll go move, Google it. It sounds move good. On <laughs> and pretend like I didn't ask that question. Awesome. Uh, so the next question, if you could go back to Caitlin, who was just starting out, who just graduated uni, who is just getting into the world, um, and give that Caitlin one piece of advice, 
moving forward, what would that piece of advice be? I think it would be to not worry about what everybody else thinks so much. Uh, your instincts are spot on and only you know yourself well enough to know what to do next. I love it. Don't, uh, don't listen to the crowd, listen to the voice that's inside of you and just yeah. keep moving forward. Yep. All right. And uh, final question. I love quotes and words of wisdom. Um, this is kind of a, a wisdom podcast as we're talking about health, business, relationships, and spirit. So um, if you could give one quote, if you don't have the full quote in mind, you could just give a word of wisdom. Um, what, is, what would that be? So there's an amazing Amelia Earhart quote that I love, which um, again, I won't have the exact quote, but it's something along the lines of the only way to get something done is to do it. And it's something that I have to remind myself of often whenever I feel a little bit of doubt creeping in or I don't know how I'm going to do this. Just get started. Just do it. Absolutely. Just do it. I love uh, that. What Nike's slogan is just do it. Um, I think that's it. It's so simple. And so, um, important because if we don't, you know, so, so many times we can get caught up in our mind, um, Mm -hmm. and not, you know, just get stuck in that rut of rumination and not actually acting. But if you just do it, uh, everything will take care of itself. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I think there have been times where I felt a little bit nervous and what if I fail? And then I sort of remind myself, but you know what, what if it's amazing and you'll never know unless you try. So go for it. And the embarrassment doesn't hurt that much if it fails. No. (laughs) (laughs) So true. (laughs) Awesome. Um, Okay, last, last question. Uh, You know, you've given us a lot of great advice today, so I'm sure there's people out there who would love to get in contact with you. Um, If they wanted to get in contact, what would be the best way for them to do that? I would say reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, The spelling of my name is slightly different. So it's Caitlin with a C. Um, watch out for that, but you can find me on LinkedIn, Caitlin Lewis. Um, feel free to reach out. I make a point to respond to everyone and would love to catch up. And you're much better than me. I think my, my LinkedIn, it's just, it, there's so many messages in there. I, I'm horrible <laughs> at responding. <laughs> oh dear. You'll have to figure out a way to automate that. Oh yeah. Right. You need to hire mm-hmm. an assistant. Um, But that is Caitlin with a C, C C-A-I-T-L-Y-N-L-E-W-I-S. You can find her on LinkedIn and I will also put her URL, the LinkedIn URL in the show notes. So if you'd like to get in contact with her, check it out there. Thank you so much. Awesome. Well, Caitlin, again, thank you very much for hopping on the show. I uh, I had a blast talking with you. Um, For everybody who came along with us on this journey today, thank you guys for showing up. Um, We couldn't do this without you. Again, the best way to support the show is just to subscribe, like, and share with your friends and family. And uh, I look forward to having everybody on the next episode. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for sticking with us on another episode of the Pursuing Greatness podcast. I hope you got a lot of value out of that guest. Um, Again, the best way to support the show is just to subscribe, like, and share with your friends and family. Also, check out PursuingGreatnessPodcast.com if you want to get more information about what we do and what we offer. Um, I hope you guys have a great day and, uh, and keep living in integrity with yourselves. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode coming shortly.